Hi friends, myself Dr. Ilyas and welcome to Sully's Rounds. In this video, we are going to discuss about 10 deadly ECG pattern which you should never miss. So, let's get started. Always be vigilant for this ECG pattern which you can easily miss. Otherwise, it will lead to poor outcome. First of all, you should be aware of fourth universal definition of myocardial infarction according to 2018 AHA. According to this, for calling STEMI, there should be symptoms consistent with ACS plus new ST elevation in at least two contiguous leads. And this ST elevation should be at least 2.5 mm in males less than 40 years and 2 mm in males more than or equal to 40 years and 1.5 mm in females regardless of age in lead V2 and V3. In all other leads, at least 1 mm of ST elevation is required. And these all findings should be occur in the absence of left bundle branch block, left ventricular hypertrophy and non-acute MI ST elevation conditions like hyperkalemia. So what is mean by J point? J point is the junction between the QRS termination and ST segment onset. So this picture shows various patterns of J point. Before going to ECGs, these following points should be noted. ECG may be non-diagnostic in nearly half of all patients who initially present with acute coronary syndrome. There are STEMI equivalent patterns that are caused by occlusion of vessel that supply significant portion of left ventricle. So, under diagnosis of this pattern results in poor outcome. In this video, we will be discussing 5 ECG pattern. Rest will be discussed in the upcoming video. So, let's see the first ECG. A 40 year old male with atypical chest pain who presented in emergency department. So what are the findings in this ECG and how will you proceed further? If you are not aware of this pattern, you may miss a major coronary occlusion. So look carefully. This pattern is called the Winder pattern and also called the Winder syndrome. And this indicate proximal LAD occlusion. So let's discuss about some important findings which help in diagnosing the wind. So the wind syndrome indicate an anterior STEMI equivalent and it signifies acute proximal LAD occlusion and it is seen in 2 percentage of acute LAD occlusion. And it was first reported in a 2008 case series by D. Winder and Pellens in New England Journal of Medicine. And patients are present with chest pain. And they are younger and may, more males are there. And there is a strong association with hypercholesterolemia in these patients. And the diagnostic criteria of D. Winder syndrome include an upsloping SP segment depression at least 1 mm at the J point in the precordial leads V2 to V4 and tall symmetric upright T wave in precordial leads and absence of ST elevation in the precordial leads and ST segment elevation in AVR. In this picture you can see these findings that is in V2 and V3 you can see an upsloping ST segment depression with hyperacute T wave. So, identifying these patterns will lead to improved outcomes and it will decrease mortality because this patient requires immediate percutaneous coronary intervention. Moving on to second ECG. This is a 45 year old female with chest pain. Look carefully and tell me what are the important findings in this ECG. Even though 
it may look like a normal ecg you can see an isolated st depression with the t inversion in late avl so what is the importance of this finding it because this is the same patient after 30 minutes and repeat ecg shows st elevation mi in inferior leads that is inferior wall stemming so normally lead avl shows isoelectric st segment and upright t wave but the st depression and t wave inversion in avl is a marker of serious cardiac pathology and it is associated with the significant mid lad occlusion and also it may be the earliest change in evolving inferior wall stemming with the possible right ventricular involvement so after knowing this pattern you will not miss early ecg changes of inferior wall stemming so always take a repeat ecg once you see this pattern and the importance of this pattern is it improve the diagnosis of inferior wall stemi and the presence of this isolated st depression in avl indicate worse prognosis in case of inferior wall stemi because it indicate a more proximal rca occlusion with the right ventricular involvement so don't forget the importance of lead avl because the only change may be an isolated st depression or t inversion in this ecg may later lead to inferior wall stemi so don't forget late avl let's see the third pattern this is a 50 year old female with epigastric discomfort who comes to emergency department so what are the ecg findings you can see st depression in v1 v2 and v3 even though there is no st elevation it indicate posterior wall st elevation mi initially you may think this is st depression and these st depressions are part of anterior wall ischemia but they are not so this is isolated posterior wall mi so this indicate occlusion of distal left circumflex or posterior descending artery of rca and about isolated posterior wall mi there is horizontal st depression in lead v1 to v3 and prominent r wave is there and the st depression is followed by an upright t wave if you get this pattern get a posterior ecg with the lead v7 to v9 and you will see q wave st elevation and t inversion in v7 to v9 this is actually a vertical flipped image of v1 to v3 so actually this is a vertically flipped image of lead v1 to v3 and this is actually an st elevation in posterior wall so don't forget about this because it is often a serious condition and it is associated with the mitral regurgitation in around 70 percent of cases and it should be treated as st elevation mi so always remember st depression in v1 to v3 may represent isolated posterior wall stemi coming to a very normal looking ecg which is really abnormal and it indicate ischemia and this is the fourth ecg this is a 47 year old male with chest pain and what is that abnormal finding initially you may think this is a normal ecg here you can see an upright t wave in lead v1 normally in lead v1 and avr t wave is inverted so the presence of upright t wave in lead v1 indicate ischemia in the absence of left bundle branch block 
or left ventricular hypertrophy. So this is an upright T wave in V1. And this is more than T wave height in lead V6. This is very important. So upright T wave in V1, that is more than the height of T wave in V6, V6 indicate loss of precordial T wave balance. If it occur in the absence of left bundle branch block or left ventricular hypertrophy. And this is associated with the left circumflex occlusion. Even though it can be a normal finding in elderly, you should be beware of ischemia. Coming to last ECG of this video. This patient with history of chest pain four days back, which subsided on its own. Now four days later, he went for a checkup for the same complaint. And the doctor took a ECG even though the patient is asymptomatic, that is pain-free. So this is the ECG. So after seeing this ECG, trope was sent, which came to be normal. Can this patient be sent back to home with medication? The answer is no. Because this pattern indicates critical proximal LAD occlusion, and this pattern is called Wellens syndrome. So what is Wellens syndrome? So around 10 to 15 percentage of patients admitted with unstable angina, the diagnosis is Wellens syndrome. And myocardial infarction occurs in about 75 percentage of these patients within one week. And it requires invasive therapy because they do poorly with medical management. The criteria for Wellens syndrome is there should be recent or active chest pain, no or minimal cardiac biomarkers, absence of pathological Q wave, minimal or lack of ST elevation, no loss of precordial R wave progression that is normal, and there should be characteristic T wave changes. So what is this characteristic T waves? There are two types of Wellens, type A and type B. In type A, there is biphasic T wave in precordial leads. And in type B, there is deep symmetrical T inversions. Always remember, in Wellens syndrome, the artery is open. Even though the patient in this case is asymptomatic, along with negative cardiac biomarker, patient require PCI within one week. As it denotes critical LAD occlusion, which may be progress to complete occlusion in any time. So always remember this pattern, that is Wellens syndrome. If you are not recognized this pattern and you send back this patient, he can present it in emergency department with chest pain. At that time, ECG may look normal, like this ECG, which shows upright T wave. And this is actually not a normal ECG. This indicate pseudo normalization of Wellens syndrome which is actually an hyperacute T wave of acute myocardial infarction. In this patient, the chest pain was subsided earlier, means there is opening of LAD, that is left anterior descending artery, which initially lead to biphasic T wave in V1 to V3, this is called type A pattern. As the artery remains open, the T wave evolved to be more deeply inverted, and this is called a type B pattern. When re occlusion occurred, the T became upright and it led to pseudo normalization. And if it persists, it can lead to ST elevation MI. So, this is about Wellens syndrome. So, never miss this pattern and admit the patient, even though the patient is asymptomatic and the cardiac biomarker is negative. So far, we discussed five important ECG, which you may miss if you are not aware of this pattern, and it can cost a person his life. So, please be aware of this pattern. In summary, they are d winder pattern, isolated AVL ST depression, isolated posterior wall MI, upright T wave in V1 that is more than the height of T in V6, and Wellen syndrome. So, 
Thank you for watching this video. There are five more ACG pattern which we will discuss in the upcoming video. See you.